Let's talk about this fight. So glad to see this get booked again. You guys were supposed to fight in December. Of course, Jan uh, had to pull out due to uh, what I'm seeing was personal reasons. Were you ever given a reason as to why that fight didn't take place uh, back in December? I'm curious because I, I was trying to like kind of piece the timeline together and I still don't know exactly what happened. Exactly. That's exactly where I am too. Um, there's no real reasoning to what happened. First, we were told he was injured. Then next, you know, this guy's posting videos of him working out. I'm like, okay, that's clearly not what it is. And then I hear that um, there's personal issues. I heard maybe his newborn son had COVID or something like that. That wasn't what the situation was, at least from what I've heard. And then uh, the other one was the visa issue, which he posted a video of him being cleared for his visa. So then I'm like, in my head, there's only a couple of things. Maybe, and I'm not trying to point any fingers, but maybe there's a little cycling thing going on over there. And then he maybe was missed the time slot. I, I think that's how that stuff works. To, to get off and be cleared in time, or maybe he didn't feel like he had adequate enough training for this particular fight style and matchup. So um, all things aren't good. So it's like, you know, you sign a dotted line, you show up to the date. You know, if you're not hurt, you didn't get injured, you're not getting surgery, show up to the fight, man. Like, this is what the fans wanted. I've been wanting this. He supposedly has been wanting this. You know, I got trained for him with what I got. He's got trained for me for what with what he has. And to pull out a fight is kind of um, uh, I don't even know what to call it. It's just kind of. And before I gave him the benefit of the doubt, now I just think it's kind of weak. But um, whatever, we're gonna fight, and we're gonna eventually figure it out. Were you worried this might not happen? You never know with fights. I mean, he had a situation last year where he was supposed to fight Marlon Marais. That fight never even ended up happening. You know, with stuff. I, I know that was a bit of a different situation. But did that cross your mind at all that maybe I'm getting screwed out of this thing? Yeah, but, you know, I try to keep it uh, positive. Keep it positive, yeah. No, of course, of course. No, I, I like the positive. Existence, yeah, because I know TJ had just came back, and I was well, like, there's no way this little weasel is going to come take my spot. There's no way. I'll go to his house and go fight him, and we'll fight to figure out who's fighting him. Like, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things. But, yeah. What did you think of TJ's comments? I know he's got to sort of play that role up a little bit, but, you know, him saying he never lost the belt and, you know, that he should get a title shot when he comes back. Like, did you catch any of the, some of the interviews he did sort of leading up to his return? Yeah, a little bit, and um, I think it's kind of laughable. I mean, the guy's been cheating almost his entire UFC career, and uh, if he thinks that warrants an immediate title shot, I, I mean, I guess in terms of what he's done, but I um, mean, he's also done it cheating this whole time. So um, they finally were able to catch him, and it, it makes you wonder, like, when do they decide to do, like, EPO testing and stuff like that? Because there are more difficult stuff to test for, more expensive, and it's kind of at their leisure to – kind of decide when they want to test for stuff like that. Um, and TJ's a tough opponent. He's built a big name. He's made a ton of money. If anyone ever cheated in the sport and made off to the bank and ran off laughing, it's that guy. You know, he's the perfect example of what cheating can accomplish you, but how many guys have done that and actually gotten himself nothing even close to that, a fraction of what he's made in terms of uh, financial investments and buying houses, starting your own company, buying a boat, like, no one, no one gets that lucky. He's gotten lucky enough, you know. Kudos to him, but um, reality is going to slap him in the face when he gets back into that octagon, one hundred percent. Do you think he believes all that that he should be the champion and that he should, you know, get these opportunities and that he, you know, wasn't cheating and stuff? Or do you think that's part of the character because he's kind of embraced this whole snake thing, right? That was even before this all happened with him, you know, leaving Team Alpha Male. Uh I think he's got to kind of make himself feel comfortable so that he can sleep at night by telling himself what, tell himself stuff that's going to make him feel better and uh, if that's what he's got to do to get up in the morning to, to get to work i guess so but um i know if he fights a guy like me mental warfare is going to be a motherfucker because i'm going to be attacking that guy and, and making him come to terms with reality and what it is like dude your, your whole career is tainted like no matter what you want to say your whole career is tainted your teammates are ready old teammates are ready ratted you out for what you've been doing for years at this point you know, so if you feel like you're that accomplished, uh, apparently you had a little bit of uh, self-doubt and um, not enough belief in yourself and your skill set to need to cheat. You know, so if, if you're feeling confident, I, I think Henry would have smashed him at 35. So in my eyes, you got crushed at 25. You were going to get crushed at 35 as well. It was just a matter of time. You needed all that stuff to to um, to perform. Um, a lot of us are doing it clean these days, you know, so I still think there's a good amount of people that are out there cheating, but uh, I think a lot more of us are starting to compete clean.